everyone. My name is Chloe and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So today is Monday, July 5th, which means uh, Jeremy's home from work, which is great. Um, having this like extended weekend just makes my life so happy. Like I love it. I would rather have a Monday off than a Friday off. Tell me if you agree. Um, but it does make the week feel weird. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So today is a weird day. Because if you watched my last vlog, you would know that both of my kids were sick last week. Ainsley had a cold and acted like it didn't bother at all. And now Jeremy and I have it and we are both like, we can't move. This hurts. Um, Jeremy's definitely got it worse than I do right now. I just have a sore throat and like the body aches and that kind of stuff. but And no energy. But he's got like coughing and all of that congestion going on. So... Hopefully, um, mine stays where it is and we're just all healthy and done by the end of the week. So, um, as far as reading goes, I finished The star Cross Sisters of Tuscany by Lori Nelson Spielman, I think. And I really like this one. This one really surprised me how much I liked it. So, I gave it four stars. This is about um, multiple generations of women in this family in which the second-born daughters are supposedly cursed to never marry, never find love. Uh, this curse supposedly dates back a long, long time. The family lives in Brooklyn, New York, and um, they're from Italy. And there is Poppy, who is like a great aunt. The, it is the grandmother's sister. And Poppy is ostracized from the whole family. Nobody talks to her. She's kind of scorned. Um, supposedly something terrible happened within the family that I don't want to get too much into, but so nobody talks to Poppy. And Nani is the grandma, and she is very, very controlling of the whole family, including our main character, Amelia. So Amelia gets a letter from Poppy one day and is like, hey, come to come on this all expenses paid uh, trip back to Italy with me. And she really wants to go because she doesn't know Poppy really. Like she doesn't have any ill will towards her. Um, and she just wants to go know more about this family. She is like, I don't know if it ever says exactly how old she is, but I get the vibe that she's like late twenties, early thirties, still single, and just has been living under the shadow of this curse for her whole life. And so she's like, I want to go figure out if this is true or not. So she defies her nanny, which is a big deal and goes to Italy with Poppy, as well as her cousin, Lucy, who is also a second born daughter. So they go back to Italy and Lucy, Amelia, and Poppy all had such great personalities that I felt like complimented each other really well. So Poppy is this quirky older lady who just, her like philosophy is it's possible. And I love that. I love that positivity. She was real quirky and she like had a great attitude for somebody who has been like scorned by her whole family. She still was really great and upbeat. And then Amelia is very responsible, very practical, very, um, kind of constrained and this is the first time she's like really stepping out on a limb for herself and then Lucy is kind of like an F the man type character where she is has this like promiscuous lifestyle because she is living under the shadow of this curse and she's like I'm never gonna get married I'm just gonna sleep around a whole bunch etc etc so the three of them go to Italy and if you like Italy, if you've been to Italy, this gives a great um, Italian vibe because they travel all over Italy. They talk about the different cities and things they're doing. And um, the grandmother had a great love that was there. And so it's kind of that story. It's told from Amelia and Poppy, uh, Poppy, not the, not the grandmother, but the um, Poppy aunt, great aunt, whatever. Um, they, it's told through both of their perspectives through present day as well as a long time ago when she lived in Italy. And so I really, really liked it. Um, I'm not going to get too much into what happens there, but there is some romance. However, I would definitely classify this as a women's fiction kind of family study, family secrets. And there were some very quotable lines and all that kind of stuff. The reason I'm giving it four, not five, is because there were a couple pacing issues, but I was never like super bored. And, um, also Amelia has this best friend at home who has been pining for her forever. And the way that all worked out was not my favorite and felt very like not authentic, but the rest of the book felt pretty authentic, pretty good. And I would recommend it. So four stars on that and, uh, we'll see what I pick up next. Hey everyone. It is Wednesday maybe. And, um, we are just in the garage kind of cleaning stuff out and we did some other things outside, but so I'm just sitting down for a break to tell you about the book I just read. And 
you guys, you know this is this channel very rarely has like salty reviews, and yet I feel like I've got them coming out my ears lately. So I read um, "There I'll Find You" or "There You'll Find Me" or something um, by Jenny B. Jones, and I'm giving it two stars. I despised it. And so this book is about well. So the premise, the back of the book, leads you to believe this book is about a young girl who her brother has died, and so she decides to take this internship in Ireland. Um, it's the same internship that he did, and he she's going like with his travel journal to kind of retrace his steps and get closer to her brother that way. Okay, cool. She meets this heartthrob on, on an airplane that supposedly nobody recognizes, and he's this uber famous guy, but whatever. They strike up a friendship. She's not interested. The whole hard to get thing, of course. And so whatever, I am expecting based on the um, premise and like the beginning that this is going to be a lighthearted, fun travel book, you know, whatever, with a little bit of romance. Cool, great, sign me up. However, this book is a book about anorexia. It is very dark. It is very hard to read. It is the most triggering book I have ever read if you are somebody that has ever struggled with anorexia or anything. And to my knowledge, I could not find a single trigger warning listed anywhere or even like really mention of this. There is some mention in the description that she like takes up a vice and the vice is controlling your food and not eating and exercising a ton, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this book does a lot of the things I really feel like are harmful in regards to eating disorders and that kind of thing, um, in books, especially targeted at young people. So this book talks about what size she is. So at the very beginning, she talks about what size she is and how she is, um, a little more athletically built because she's been a cheerleader. So she's got some thicker legs and, um, that kind of stuff. Like she's just a strong girl and that's great. And then, um, as the book goes on, it like, Every chapter, it seems like, starts with like what she is eating or not eating and the calorie counts and that kind of stuff. And it it was just terrible, you guys, it was terrible. And so she, of course, like has this downward demise. Um, her brother died two years ago, so I'm a little like wondering. So she, well, I mean, it makes sense. So she went to therapy and that kind of stuff in the two years that she was home. But now that she is gone, like her parents are like, okay, I think you're good. She's like, okay, I think I'm good. And then she goes on this trip and um, it, the anorexia comes from a desire to control, which totally like that. I understand that completely that you want control and controlling your food is the only thing you can control when your life feels kind of chaotic. So um, that makes sense. However, nobody noticed what she was doing, despite the fact that she was taking like multiple long runs a day. She was eating barely anything like 200 calorie meals. Um, and nobody really noticed because she was heavier, I guess, or thicker or whatever. So that part, I feel like, is accurate. However, I think um, the way it all wrapped up in the end is this big confrontation scene where literally everybody, her friends, family, et cetera, all just kind of gang up on her and tell her she's got a problem. And you guys don't ever do that. If you know somebody that has an eating disorder or something, there are so many more beneficial, helpful ways. And the way this character reacted felt very inauthentic. She was like, oh, you're right. I, I'll be better. And it's like, uh, you guys, it just, I felt like queasy the whole time reading it because not only are you watching this girl demise and I, I just feel like you can watch that and you can talk about that and it just can be done so much better. You guys, it can be done so much better. And the way it ended is very inauthentic. It's terrifying to have people confront you like that. Like it is, that is not good. You guys, it's not good at all. So I just felt terrible reading it. I don't think it was handled properly if I would not want my young girls to read it at all. And so, um, you guys take this review with a grain of salt because it is something that is personal to me and, um, not necessarily this exact situation, but I think it, I may be saltier than others about it, but I just don't think it was a good idea and I don't, I did not appreciate the way it was done. So, um, I would not recommend that one at all. Um, so I needed to pick up something light and fun. And so I picked up Yoga Pant Nation by Lori Gelman and, um, I am really, really, really liking that one. So this is the third in her class mom series. And now her son that was in kindergarten in the first one, he is in fifth grade and she is once again the class mom. 
but things are a lot different now. So she is taking care of her two-year-old granddaughter. Um, she is trying to teach spin lessons. She is just living yoga pant life. There's some bullying and things going on with her son. And there's just this book, like these books are anything like amazing or epic or whatever, but they are so funny and so relatable to me. There is times where it's a little crass, but um, she, th this takes place in the Kansas City suburbs. Hello, I live in the Kansas City suburbs. Um, she is, like I said, trying to be a spin instructor and I used to be a spin instructor. Um, and you guys, I literally LOL'd at a time. She was like teaching her first spin class and she wanted to say, like in her head, she's like, I wanted to say, get off your butt as well as get off your, um, tush, but I didn't know what to say. So I said, get off your bush. <laughs> And I just laughed out loud so much because I know like that, that first class, especially in those first few, like until you really get your groove and your style and that kind of stuff is really like hard and awkward. And you like, you're wanting to be encouraging without being cheesy. And it's just, it's so, it was so funny. Um, there's other parts of it that are a little bit like a little crass. I mean, if you, if you've read these books, you know, um, she is a, uh, a funny girl that does not swear or stand away or shy away from swear words or anything like that. So, um, I don't know. I thought it was great. Sorry. This is a moving vlog. We've got, um, two walkers now, you guys, Annie is just walking, walking up a storm, but it's a little, um, precarious. So that is what I'm doing. And this is like just feeding my soul. You guys, it's feeding my soul. Um, so this is exactly what I need after that really hard book. So, um, I'll let you know when I finish it, let you know my final thoughts, but it's, it's very great for what it is. So also, I don't think you need to read all three. I mean, you can, like I'm reading it for the relatability and the comment comedy and stuff, not necessarily because I care a whole lot about like following every moment of her life, but, um, in the first one, her son's in kindergarten. In the second one, I haven't read it, but I'm guessing he's somewhere between kindergarten and fifth grade. And now he's in fifth grade. So I will definitely read the second one. I just um, have this one on NetGalley. So um, it comes out July 13th. So I wanted to read it. So I think you can do that. It's up to you, whatever. So I will check in when I finish it. Hey everyone. So it's later in the day and I have finished um, the, uh, the class mom book. Why am I not thinking? Uh, Yoga Pant Nation, and I'm giving it four stars, and I think it's because um, it's just such the right book at the right time for me, because they're funny. It's truthfully probably more like a three and a half star, but it was exactly what I needed, and Lori Gilman does it again. So, if you like the first in the series, I would definitely say pick this one up. So, um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna pick up next, but I just wanted to let you know I did finish it, all was good. I like have glimpses forward to when my kids are that age and I think it'll be really funny, especially um, like the, the, the places she talks about are fictional, but I like really wish they were real. Um, and the schools and stuff that she talks about are fictional. However, I mean, it's very, very stereotypical for the area. So I thought it was fun, definitely would recommend. Everyone, it is Saturday, and I have finished um, *The Therapist* by B.A. Paris. So, I'm not sure how I feel about this one because you guys, so slow domestic thrillers that are like paranoid and kind of psychological. Those are like my bread and butter, which is why I love *Behind Closed Doors* by B.A. Paris, and I just felt like that tension was there the whole time. I would say this one captures that same tension or a similar tension. But it takes slow to a whole nother level. This is only 300 pages and yet it took me like days to read and I was just kind of like struggling with the pacing of it. And so this book is about, uh, let's see, Alice, I think is her name, Alice and Leo. They move into this gated community called The Circle and they move in. They're just dating. They've been um, like having a long dis distance relationship because they live in different spots, but they now have bought this house in The Circle and they move in and Alice finds out that somebody was brutally murdered in the house. So she's immediately like, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, and it was a therapist that was killed. So you get, you do get some um, perspectives, like you get mostly just Alice, but then you, there's also some flashbacks to the therapist um, having an appointment with somebody and you're not exactly sure what's going on there. And it does all come together in the end. But um, so Alice is trying to figure out this whole time, what happened did so the the therapist's husband was accused of killing her because he had like a spotty alibi and then committed suicide right thereafter so everybody just has accepted the husband did it but alice is like i don't know if that's true because now here i am in this house 
creepy things are happening. Uh, I feel like I'm being stalked a little. I don't know that her killer is gone. And so she like tries to figure out um, what happened and then how she fits in this community or if she does. So she gets to know a lot of a lot of the other people in the community. There's some other outlier people that are in there. There's a lot of different red herrings and things, but Overall, it's just really slow and it gets really repetitive at times with Alice's thoughts of like what's going on and um, her suspicions jump around like boom, 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 boom. And with it being so slow, I think if you are the type of thriller reader that really likes to try to think through what happened and like you want to figure it out before the end, you might like this book. I am not that kind of thriller reader. I don't, I'm just like along for the ride. I don't really try to spend a whole lot of time throughout trying to think of what happened. And so this one got a little slow for me. So I'm giving it three and a half stars. It was still good. I would say it is my least favorite BA Paris that I've read so far, but it was good. And the ending was satisfying. So that is that. Um, now I have started People We Meet on Vacation, but I don't think I'm going to finish it today. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this vlog and I will see you in the next one. So if you have read any of these books that I talked about this week, let me know what your thoughts were on them. What did you read this week? Did you have a good week? Did anything extra special happen? We have had an uneventful week and I am saying thank you, Jesus, for that because we have had too much going on lately. So it's been a pretty good week. Um, let me know your thoughts and we'll see you in the next one.